Hi folks, here we are with video part number four. Now, as you can see, this isn't, uh, you know, no, Dave hasn't got lazy. He's not doing his sit-down uh, thing. You know, he's, he's, this isn't his sit-down. This is actually, uh, this isn't a, a stand-up clip. Uh, this is even worse. This is this is Dave trying to sort of uh, analyse and give his take on the industry. This is actually a video. This is a, this is a, a clip from what I assume was a longer interview. But it's about a four-minute clip, and it was uploaded to a channel... Uh, 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 that I've never heard of, um, uh, you know, but it was a channel called uh, Kibbe on Liberty or something, K I B B E. I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, uh, but uh, and obviously, you know, it's a testament to what a sort of you know uh, to to how much people are interested and respect Dave Rubin's take on this. This this video is called Dave Rubin talks about do, tr trying to do stand up in an SJW world. Now, first of all, Dave Rubin has always tried to do stand-up in any world whether it's sjw world disney world or fucking jurassic world right he's always been trying to do stand-up you know you know but right but the bo the bottom line bottom line is you know, dave dave's th this this video has been uh, you know was uploaded in august 2019 so it's been almost two years and uh, Kibbe on Liberty has seven and a half thousand subs. This video has less than 600 views. Just to give you an idea of our... Anyway, so let's listen to Dave Rubin with his, his pithy analysis. Pithy. Hollywood is drying up, and I think it, it's not a coincidence that the more that the social justice uh, monster, it's really the only way I can describe it, the more that the social justice monster infiltrates Hollywood, infiltrates all places of creativity. Okay, I'm sorry. What, when, when, why do people, you know what, I don't, I don't expect people to like anything. You know, I don't expect you to like, uh, you know, films, uh, you know, certain films or certain, you know, you don't have to. That's a matter of taste and, and that's subjectivity. But I do not, please, can you fuckers please stop pretending that the idea that Hollywood being a hub of progressivism and making content that is pushing a social justice agenda is in any way new. It's what it's always done. You can go back to any. You can go back any time. Let's go back. Uh, you know, give it gives up. You know, I mean, one one of the films that you lot love fucking bringing up, like as if as if it's a fucking film that you lot is is you know. You know the conservatives or the right would it ever fucking have agreed with at the time is Blazing Saddles. That's one of the most fucking progressive, you know, social justice commentaries and satires on fucking on racism that's ever you know that has ever been made. You can go back before them. They, you know, uh, Charlton Heston. Uh, you know, in the sixties um, during the civil rights movement, one of the you know one of the people who you know didn't just sort of give. You know, didn't just uh, you know support the civil rights movement. He actually stood on stage with Martin Luther King and marched with people during. So it was Charlton Heston. Now I know Charlton Heston. You know, you know, a lot of people. If you've only ever seen Bowling for Columbine, you know, people will have a very you know negative view of Charlton Heston, and that's fine. I'm not saying the guy was perfect, but the fact is, he you know he was at that point in Hollywood, he was the man, right? He was the guy, right? And he didn't just, and he, and it went a step further. There was a film he was in called The Omega Man, uh, in which he, which featured him as the leading man, as the leading man having an interracial romance with a with an, a, a black actress called Rosalind Cash, and in, in an interview I think with Whoopi Goldberg about like nineteen ninety two. Uh, Charlton Heston, lit, you know, said that yeah, yeah, he got a lot, of, you know, he got a lot of uh, flack and hate from people because he was pushing that anti-white, you know, re you know, tolerance and social justice agenda. You, know, you can pick any point. When has it never been like that? When has it never been this way? Brokeback Mountain, you know, Heath Ledger and J Jake Gyllenhaal, fucking, you know. 69 in dicks in a fucking tent, two cow gay cowboys. Oh, it's a pushing a gay agenda on the. Blah, blah, blah. You know, you know what, what? Pick another one. Tom Hanks, Philadelphia, playing a gay guy, a gay guy with AIDS, right? That was pushing the boundaries and the fucking, you know, and pushing a social justice agenda. Pick any fucking point. When is this? Where is the? Where are all these non-progressive? Where are all these conservative? 
themed films or films with a conservative agenda. So, you know, some probably do exist. Do exist. You know, you know, I've seen some some people argue that. You know, I mean, Con Air is one actually. But this is why, Dave, you get so many of the fucking people who you consider to be your peers in the political punditry are people are nothing more than people who tried to crack it in Hollywood and failed. Ben Shapiro tried writing screenplays and scripts for sitcoms and films, right? And he's tried his hand at writing books and he even made a film film lately that everyone but the people who fucking already agreed with him fucking hated, right? Uh, you know, uh, um, Andrew Breitbart, you know, same fucking thing. What's it? Uh, uh, um, Steve Bannon, you know? And then you've got all these people who had a vague sense of career, but now their careers are dried up or they haven't got any work and now they've gone into it and they're claiming there's some bigger, you know, it's just a conspiracy against them. It's not. It's because you're shit. You suck. Right? That's what it is. You know, creativity. What do you create? You know, what have you fucking created? You know? It's why comedy is not great anymore. I mean, who's... It's a total buzzkill. Like, yeah. How do you tell a joke if, if someone if you gotta look over, offended? Yeah, you gotta look over your show. Well, loads of fucking people manage it. Doesn't seem to bother Ricky Gervais. He's done fucking well out of it, hasn't he? Didn't bother Dave Chappelle. He still fucking gets the... He still makes fucking millions and sells out, doesn't he? Hasn't bothered... Hasn't done any Bill Maher any damage. Hasn't done Joe Rogan any, Joe Rogan any damage. You know? There's loads of fucking... I could go online. Jim Norton is another one. I could go on... I could probably go online and I could probably find, without even trying, 30 what stand-up specials from you know, HBO or Netflix or whatever that are literally based... That are literally people, like, moaning about political correctness and safe spaces and fucking, you know, all the PC brigade and all, you know... And, you know, I'm... You know, this is offensive. Fuck you in the arse, you fucking... You know, and what... It, that's what it is. There's, there's, you know, there's no, uh, there's no comedians. Do, there's comedians making fucking their careers out of that, right? And I wouldn't mind, but you aren't one of them, are you? No one's looking over their fucking shoulder. Another comedian, you know, one comedian who does it and does it in a very, uh, you know, in a, in a, in a really good way. He's, he's actually, and I would recommend. I always recommend this guy, Anthony Jaselnik. Right, if you think you, you you want to sit there and talk about people worried about looking over your shoulder, no one's worried. Forget even politics after that. You know, Louis C.K. is still getting booked again. He can still go and get booked. Bill Cosby was doing sold out fucking theatres. Right? But he was doing sold out theatres after fifty women had accused him of rape for God's sake. Don't give me this idea that there's some kind of bias. They will sell if it's if you'll sell tickets, they will book you. There are loads of comedians out there who do very, who, who are making careers out of it. Now, it's easy for you, and I know that conservatives love to look back at stuff, at comedy or films that are 30, 40 years old and try and lay claim to them, you know, because society has progressed on since then and, and, and progressives have dragged you fuckers kicking and screaming as best we can into a more fucking modern, into a world where, you know, a more modern world where you've have, you've had to sort of just basically accept certain fucking, you know, things in it now. You can't argue against them. You just sort of give up. You know, you don't sort of endorse them or embrace them, but you don't sort of like, you know, make a big deal about them anymore, right? But now your politics are finally aligned with where politics were, what was considered progressive 40 years ago. But you don't get to claim, you know, you don't get to claim blazing saddles. Because you'd have been the fuckers pissing and moaning about. You don't get to claim people like Richard Pryor or Lenny Bruce or fucking Bill Hicks, right? You don't get to claim Billy Connolly or Peter Cook or Chris Morris. You don't get to claim those fuckers, right? Because because at the time they you were the ones they were pissing off. And what about you? Where's your fucking you you? Has anyone heard Dave Root? The only offensive thing about your stand-up, Dave, is that it's shit. And that's the only offensive stand-up I personally care about. You know? I honestly, if, if, if I hear something, if, if it makes me laugh, I don't really care where it fucking came from, who told it. A joke's a joke, you know? But, you know, it, but don't sit here and pretend that there's no great comedy. I'm sure, maybe you wonder why Joe Rogan never book asked you back. You know? 
There are plenty of comedians making a living off this fucking bullshit. Order and go, oh, 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 I offended that woman or that guy or, or that guy. You've, com- comedy's always offended people. Do you know what Do you know what used to happen, though? Comedians used to just, comedians just go, because w- when you write material, you know. It doesn't, you, you're not stop, it doesn't stop you from fucking get, having, a, having work. There's no rule in comedy that says if you offend one person, then all of a sudden... No one's going to book you. Oh, God, we can't book that person. He offended someone. It's never happened. I or a woman, I can't even, not sure what I can say. You know, it's like, it really is. So there are some comics that are doing good stuff. I would put Joe Rogan at the top of the list. There are comics. Oh, oh, there are some comics who are doing good Well, then if they're, okay, then, then that's it. That's the end of it. If they're doing good stuff and, you know, and and you put, you put Joe Rogan, of course you do, right? You know, but you put Joe Rogan there. But if there's people doing it, then what's the fucking problem? And you know what? Comedy doesn't have to always be edgy and taboo busting and, and, you know, and crossing boundaries. You know, it just has to be funny. There are lots of great comedians who never do anything controversial. You know? But, you know, but that, that doesn't stop them being, you know, that doesn't mean they're not brilliant. Look at Bill Bailey. You know, you've probably never heard of him, have you, you fucking zippy from Rainbow looking twat? You know... Yeah. Um, but I'm doing stand-up again. I'm selling out all these clubs, and I barely... Well, I just... there you go, then. I mean, what the fuck? You're not selling out all these clubs. Jordan Peterson selling out clubs, and you're fucking grabbing onto his ass like the fucking rancid barnacle you are. Just mess around with the crowd the whole time, and I, I, I do this fun oppression Olympics. So thing. what you're saying is it's a fucking load of shit. What, so you can... It's perfectly easy for people. You know, it's, 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 it's perfectly... It's easily doable. It's not a fucking, you know... Joan Rivers, there's another one. She never fucking stopped working, did she? And she was brutal. Whatever you think of Joan Rivers, and I know there's a lot of mixed feelings, but she did not give a fuck. You know. Where I get everybody to yell out their oppressions and someone to yell out that they got a link. Well, that's brilliant, Dave. How fucking imaginative. Somebody is, you know, blind in one eye, and we, we kind of have them fight. Yeah, let's out. mock you. Let's mock this guy who's blind in one eye. Yeah, hey, look at you. Let's mock this. You know, at least he only has to see half your show. Oh, and... So I don't think it's a coincidence because this... That's not even an original idea, is it? Oppression Olympics? That's not, you didn't even think of that. You know, I've, I've heard fucking accounts from people about that. But it's, it's, sometimes it's backfired. You know, go see Ronald Reagan on Majority Report talking about this that. This postmodern Oppression Olympics, this idea that whatever your victimhood is somehow gives you virtue is the reverse of, I think, the things that we believe in. I yeah. mean, I, I don't believe that victimhood is virtue. I, what I believe is virtue is taking control of your life. Stop virtue signalling, Dave. It's bad. That's bad, that. You're signalling your virtue, Dave. Right? And that makes you a bad... You know, you're just doing this to look good. That makes you a bad person. I know this because you lot have been telling me that. And going to get what is yours. And I've never heard anyone say that victimhood is virtue. It's not. But standing up in the face of victim... In the face of oppression, you know, that is virtue. You know? Standing up and saying things that are going to get you an un, you know, just an un, unmitigated m- amount of fucking shit, that is quite virtuous. You wouldn't know that, Dave, because you sit there, whenever you get faced with a load of fucking hate, whether it's anti-Semitism or homophobia, it's generally from people you consider your friends or from the fucking chat room of people who, you know, of, of, the, pe- of the people whose show you're being interviewed on who are your fellow right-wingers. Calling you a sodomite and a fucking, you know, and making like triple parentheses and shit, right? It's them and you sit there and you fucking take it. You say nothing. You sit there and just let them do it to you because you're a gutless, ballless little fucking worthless piece of shit. You're pathetic. You've got no virtue in you whatsoever, right? It's it's pitiful. Without taking- just understand this, that your your husband hates you. Taking it from somebody else. That's virtuous. That's that's honorable, and that's the society that I want to live in. So it's weird watching Hollywood kind of. You drive. live in a two million dollar mansion, motherfucker, in California. You don't know about anything about society. Your nearest neighbor is about ten fucking acres away. Yeah, but it doesn't surprise me at all. It, it it actually makes perfect sense. Or you see somebody like Seth MacFarlane, who's now a big lefty, where now Seth MacFarlane is not now a big lefty. He's never been anything but, you know. Yes, his yes, his his stuff has not always, but he's been around. He's been around twenty years. Guess what, Dave? Pe- people change, you know. But he's never been. But Seth MacFarlane's never been a been, been a uh, 
a, been a, a right winger or anything other than you know, you know his jokes have never meant to have been taken seriously. But Family Guy started at a time when that you know when when that kind of humour was you know received differently how it was meant to be taken. Unfortunately, because of fucking humourless right wing dickheads like fucking Sargon of a card and other cunts who like to take you know stand up co comedians jokes and then reappropriate them as if there's some kind of argument the classic example being Chris Rock's niggers versus black people which was a great stand up routine in 1996 and then right wing and then right wing white guys like you know started using it as as an excuse as if Chris Rock was making a giving it you an excuse to oh, as if that was the point of it and it wasn't that's why Chris Rock said in an interview he you know he didn't want to fucking he stopped doing that routine because he realized he found out how it was being misappropriated right so you fuckers don't you don't fucking make comedy you destroy comedy he's saying you know his family guy's not going to make gay jokes anymore it's like well for 20 years every joke about stewie is a gay joke now they make jokes about everybody right they make jokes about black people and well i don't know that he said that. i don't care quite frankly i don't watch family, family guy it depends what you mean by a gay joke there's this natural assumption and it is one that annoys me and it's one a lot of people on the left make where they 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 act as if when you make a joke about something it is by default disrespectful and it's not you can make jokes about things that are actually empowering that actually make people feel better. You know, it depends what you mean by by g gay joke or you know, but, you know. But you know, I'm sure there are still fucking. But you know, just because. But maybe he's bored of just telling. Maybe he wants to do different sort of joke. You know, this is the thing about jokes. They have a short shelf life. Shelf life. You know, and when you get people like I said, when a lot of when when that certain styles and certain types of jokes are become are being re are being misappropriated. And misrepresented by actual homophobes, a smart com a, a comedian who actually cares about the way their fucking you know th their art is received would probably look at that and go, right, I'm not doing that because I don't want to start. I don't want to give material to these people. A's and Jews and Muslims and everybody, and that's the way it should be. That's what actually. No, it should. No, it, it, there's no should, Dave. It it could be. It can be whatever we want. We are the music makers and we are the dreamers of dreams. You fucking coconut face prick it's the tapestry of a country or specifically this country america and it's like now the guy's made a couple hundred million off it and he's fit into the social justice thing and it's like we're no he's not it's not because he's fit into it dave he's just bored maybe he just doesn't want to do it anymore i'm not gonna make those jokes anymore so it's like you know it's well, not like he has to i mean things. he's been around long enough it's not like he has to worry about his fucking career or money if anything this would be the point where he he has he's got fuck you money you know Maybe he's just tired of doing those jokes. You know, you're allowed to, you know, not commit comedy doesn't have to be about that. Are you going to still make Jew jokes? Are you going to still make black jokes? Like, how do we, can we get the well, Why don't you let him decide that? You know, or why don't you ask him? Of what's okay and when is it okay? And are you going to return all that money? Of course he's not going to return all that money, you fucking imbecile. Did you give back all the money you fucking made before you, you know, before you fucking ended up on the blaze? You fucking duplicitous little fucking pile of pinworm riddled shit stained toe jam. You know, or, or even the Simpsons that were. I, I miss a poo. Yeah, it's like a poo. Oh god, a, a. A heart? I mean, a poo. Yeah, look, look, I understand. A Again, it's been around for 30 years, right? And you know what? And as, far, as far as I'm concerned, if. When Hank Azira comes out and says he gets it, you know? I didn't get it at first, but you know, you know what? It's not a big deal. You know, I mean, I wouldn't mind, but The Simpsons has sucked for 20 years, for God's sake. You know, it's sucked for ages. Who? Yeah. The hardest working guy in The Simpsons, who was an immigrant. I mean, I'm, I don't have to tell you, I'm sure, the, the Who Needs the Quickie Mart episode, he teaches. Yes, but that was 20 fucking years ago, Dave, that episode. You know, they're talking about it now. You know, it is not inherently racist for a white person to do an accent or an impression of someone but it's the but we're now in this area where it's a bit more you know where you know a lot of the a lot of the things that were just associated then have now become very negative sort of stereotypes you know the, you know the guy in the convenience store he's got loads he's got a load of bloody kids he wears you know you know he wears his pajamas during the day in a business suit in bed he can't go to the toilet without taking his old fucking family with him you know it doesn't matter now who cares 
You know, forget cancelling a poo. Just cancel that show. It's dead. It's Homer why he shouldn't be racist, in effect, and why right. he should be pro-immigration. He, again, He's you're, loved by everybody. They teach you about Hinduism, yeah. about veganism, yeah. that he has an again, Indian yes. wedding. His again, family, you're, you're citing episodes that are 20 years old, Dave. Into the community. And what's the social justice warrior response? Get a poo off the show. No, it wasn't the get him off the show. You know, it was just like, you know, maybe the character needs to have maybe characters, Dave, that were conceived 30 years ago. Are not maybe characters that were conceived in 1990 should not are not necessarily don't fit into the world in 2021. And then that's not a scenario who's probably the greatest voiceover actor of all who himself came out and said, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I won't be I don't want to, you know, he actually came out and said, you know what, I, I get it, and, and you know, I've, I've listened, and I, he apologised for it, you know? And I'm not saying, it's, no one's saying it's all bad. They're just saying it's all changed, time, you know? has to basically apologise. <laughs> he didn't have to, he chose to. Doing a poo, and it's like... Yeah. No one forced him. About? He After came out and did it of his own act. fucking accord. Should only Indian people be able to voice Indians? Should only gay people be able to act as gays? Wh whatever it is, it's just, it's, it's really, it's a, it's a mind infection that is just running rampant all over the It's place. nothing to do, it's not just about the fact it was a white guy doing the voice, it was everything else about the character. It was the whole thing, you know? It's, and it's, uh, it's bizarre and chilling and dystopian. It's chilling. A poo being taken out of the Simpsons is chilling. We gotta a, fight so it. So what's it like doing stand up again? That because it's been like what's it like again? Ten or fifteen years since you've done it, right? Yeah. So I took off about six years. So I did stand up for about twelve years in New York, and then you, you, I... he did stand up. He stood up. That's all you've ever done. You the stand up part of stand up comedy, the, the stand up bit he's mastered. When it comes to standing, being vertical, on your feet, even walking around, Dave's got it nailed. He's one of the best in the game. You know, but you know, you know. As soon as you figure out that comedy element of it, you, my friend, are going to be fucking flying too close to the sun. But apart from that, you know, you are to comedy what polio is to good legs. Moved to LA and I started doing my show. I was just going in another direction. Um, so I took literally six years off, and it's weird. You didn't take six years off. You quit. Because now... And in that time, you fucking amassed enough material to do a 15-minute opener for fucking Jordan Peterson's 90-minute show. 15 minutes! For fuck's sake! I can put my name up and we sell out clubs where, when I was in it, when I was really, like, in it, you know, I lived that life of a struggling comic and I was handing out tickets in Times Square and all... You still are a struggling comic. You haven't made your money doing comedy. You haven't made fucking cent one. That, that's a horrible life. It really is. Are you going to give that money back? Um, but, I, but I next to the naked cowboy. Yeah, literally. I mean, I was right there. I, yeah. I ran clubs with a bunch of other comics right in that Times Square. You know, forty second, forty third. I know, and we, and we saw earlier on you were brilliant at street it. area. I just walked by one of them uh, this morning, actually, in New York. Um, but when I was doing it, it's like I needed it. You know, you you need it as an artist, whatever you're doing when you're when you're in the thick of it, and you need the struggle and you need the pain and all that. And it's you weird. don't need it. It's part of it. It's what you do when you love something. You don't love anything. You love money. And that's fine. But it's the way you go about getting it. Because now I'm just having a ball doing stand-up. Well, stand then, well, then you're having a ball doing stand-up. So everything you said at the start, you know, are you are you one of those... Are you, one, are you a great comedian then, Dave? Are you one of these great comedians? Are you one of the... Are you making comedy great again? I just crack a, I crack a Where's your fucking one man special? Full jokes, but really I get up there and I do some of this SJW stuff and I kind of talk about what's in the news. I kind of talk about what's in the news. That's your fucking show, mate. That's your that's your life. But I just have fun with the crowd. Yeah. I really just have fun. It's it's not a normal stand up show by any stretch. Um, which well, I'm fine with. That. Um, yeah, probably. And I don't. And I'm just doing it. I'm truly just doing it because I. What do you mean it's not a normal stand-up show? You're doing jokes about stuff in the news, talking to the audience. That sounds like every fucking stand-up show I've ever seen. Do it now. What a fucking oh god! I hope I hope you fucking I hope you die in a car crash, but not of a car crash. I hope it's a cancer that you didn't know you had. <laughs>